I think we began to see a uh, widening of the gaps between uh, China and the United States uh, as far as North Korea policy is concerned when uh, the president began his talk about a bloody nose and mm -hmm. talk about fire and fury. I worked uh, very closely with all of our diplomatic partners in Asia, including and especially the Chinese over the eight years. Uh, I was in the White House and then in uh, the State Department. And I'm convinced that the Chinese are dead serious when they say that they are uh, committed to the full denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. I, I have no doubt about that. But I would say that denuclearization is not exactly everyone's, including China's, first priority. I think that China's first priority is maintaining stability in, on their borders. It means avoiding war, avoiding chaos. Uh, so denuclearization is a goal, mm -hmm. but it comes second to keeping things calm. And when uh, President Trump in the United States began threatening to destroy North Korea, began talking openly about preemptive strikes and so on, it caused China to rethink uh, its approach. Now. That, in the first instance, that led to more pressure on North Korea to quiet down and to behave. But more broadly, and particularly when President Trump reversed course and decided that he was, without consultation or preparation, uh, announcing uh, his intent to meet in Singapore with uh, Kim Jong-un, it caused the Chinese to conclude that they really needed to have their own independent, separate approach to North Korea and not be uh, dependent on the inconsistent uh, and perhaps unreliable U.S. approach.